Uh, let, let's bring in right now uh, uh, Tim Kaine. Uh, it was more than uh, four decades ago uh, that the first child was conceived through IVF in the United States uh, and, and was born. Uh, take a look at this clip before we introduce our guest. It's a girl. This morning at 7.46 a.m. With those words, 70-year-old Dr. Howard Jones announced the birth of America's first so-called test tube baby born this morning. She's 5-pound, 12-ounce Elizabeth Jordan Carr, born by cesarean section to 28-year-old Judith Carr, a schoolteacher in Westminster, Massachusetts. Elizabeth joins us now, along with Democratic Senator Tim Kaine of Virginia, who brought Elizabeth with him as a guest last night. Elizabeth, welcome. Who would ever believe that the miracle of your birth would be such a controversy all these years later when it's given the same hope to other parents that it gave to, to, to your family? I know, hard to believe, 42 years ago, we were having the same debate about this issue that we were uh, as, as last night. Uh, Senator, uh, talk about uh, th this, uh, this miracle uh, that, you know, again, parents all over America want that actually right now uh, can't even get protected in the United States Senate. Joe, it was um, just a, an electric night last night, and I happened to be in Birmingham the day that the University of Alabama, Birmingham, the big medical system announced that they were suspending all IVF procedures in the state, and it was like a lightning storm had hit the city. People were shocked. And what occurred to me is, I think this story sort of started in Virginia. When I got back home, I did the research about Elizabeth being born at Norfolk General Hospital. She had given an interview the day before I was doing the research where she said, for the first time in my life, I feel like an endangered species. What you need to know is there are 12 million Elizabeth cars on the planet Earth right now, people who have been born through IVF or other uh, reproductive technologies. They're living their best lives. They're raising families. They're bringing joy to their parents, grandparents, friends, and family, contributing to society. The net good to humanity is overwhelming, but we knew when the Dobbs decision came down that the uh, Republicans and states would go after IVF, would go after contraception. That's what's happening, and that's why I've joined with Tammy Duckworth to file a bill, the assisting the Building of Families Act that would protect IVF and every zip code in this country so people can choose to grow their families this way if they want. Senator, it's uh, Jen Psaki, one of, one of your constituents hey, from Virginia. Um, I wanted to ask you about what you just alluded to, because one of the warning signs that this has, or eye-opening signs that this is all exposed for us is the fact that when Republicans are going after IVF, they're going after Mifepristone, they're going after contraception. It's not just Dobbs. So break down for us what is happening in Congress right now and what should women, men, people who are concerned about this issue be aware of in terms of the legislation that is still being pushed through Congress by anti-choice uh, members? Jen, I'm not going to be too much of a legal nerd here, but when we read the Dobbs decision, the rationale wasn't just we're going to overturn Roe versus Wade. The rationale was to challenge 100 years of cases going back into the 19 teens that said if you're a person in the United States, there are some elements of your personal autonomy that are so precious that the long arm of government, especially the criminal law, can't invade it. Um, and the court threw all of that out in the Dobbs decision decision. And so that's why you see courts going after mifepristone, going after contraception, states going after um, uh, in vitro fertilization. Um, I have a bipartisan bill with Senators Murkowski, Collins, and Sinema. It's the only bipartisan bill in Congress to restore Roe versus Wade as a statutory right. The president talked about doing that last night, if you can get a Congress that will go with them. And then Tammy Duckworth is leading the bill that I co-sponsor that would make plain anywhere in the country, a provider can provide IVF, a patient can access IVF, and an insurer can insure IVF. And we need to do this in Congress so that people aren't left up to the whims of state legislators who often don't even understand the science behind what they're doing. Elizabeth Anand Gerdadas here. I, I question, when I was growing up, Republicans always talked about family values, and it seems like the desire to have children uh, is a pretty baseline family value. I, I'm curious if you were to speak to Speaker Mike Johnson, who yesterday said he was grappling with the question of whether IVF is murder. What would what case would you make about why you deserve the right to exist? 
I think my answer to that is just, you know, one that my father said 42 years ago when I was born. He said he really just didn't understand how anyone could have a problem with this technology because it allowed my mother and father to do the one thing that almost universally is wanted, and that's to build a family. So I really hope that you know, some of the double talk of we support IVF. I really hope that starts to get backed up with, with uh, you know, pushing forward on this bill. All right. Elizabeth Carr and Democratic Senator Tim Kaine, thank you both so much. We greatly ap appreciate it.